about backpacking, we practice leave no trace. So you don't you don't you don't, you don't leave anything behind, um, and the only thing you you know take are photos, and the only thing you leave are footprints. And so, you know, that's an extreme example, but but anything that gets society closer to something that's uh, more along those lines, I think, could be considered green engineering. Things are unordered, and so an engineer's job is to order them in a particular way so you can make something that you care about happen. I want to do something that helps humanity or, or the planet as a whole. I'm not interested in redesigning some widget so it works a little bit better. I hope to have some larger impact, even if that impact is contributing to something that's having a bigger impact. I wanted to do something and I wanted to, you know, turn screws and, and uh, actually make something. And so that, that's kind of how I ended up on the mechanical engineering track, is I was interested in physics, but I wanted to actually produce something. I think when I was sort of in my, like, tweeny years, I had lots of radio-controlled cars. And I loved the fact that I could turn a remote control left or right and the car would go left or right. But to me, it was just utter magic. You know, I, didn't, I had no under, understanding of how the signal got from this transmitter to the car. I knew I could use it, and eventually I was tearing these things apart and using just the radio components and then making them do other things. But it was still kind of magical how the thing worked. And so I wanted to become an electrical engineer in part because I wanted to understand how these things actually worked. Engineering, I think, in its truest form is, is taking scientific knowledge and applying it and doing something um, productive with it. Scientists get to ask all these great questions, right? As a scientist, you can be successful and you can say, all right, I want to understand this process, so I'll design this experiment and I'll study it. And it's like everywhere you look in the world, there are all these great things and we don't understand them. And so the goal is to try to learn a little bit more about that. And you're a success if you can learn a little bit more about how something works. As an engineer, I think the task is totally different. As an engineer, the task is, we want to build something. We want to build X that does something and does it reliably. Go. In a sense, it's a, a much more difficult thing because there are a million ways to do something wrong and there are only usually a few ways to do something right. Growing up outside of Syracuse in upstate New York, it was really rural. We had 30 acres to play with and my sister and I just had the run of the place. The outside was like the inside, it was just our environment that we lived in. So to me it just seemed like, why would I not want to take care of this place? I don't know what came first um, in terms of whether or not I was exposed to things that made me appreciate nature or, it, or if it was something that was innate and I'm drawn to it because of that. But, um, but as I've like, you know, become an adult, um, I've done a lot of backpacking and hiking and stuff and I, I just, you know, you kind of start to appreciate these things. You know, we own this planet and um, and we have to do things to protect it. Nature has done a lot of the things that we want to do, and they do it, or it does it a lot better than, than we could ever hope to. And so there's a lot of inspiration out there um, on things that, either things that we want to try to replicate or um, something new that we want to create and we can, we can draw from, from ideas that we see in nature. The human brain is a pretty inspirational organ. And a lot of people in my lab use the brain as their, their inspiration. So we want to know how it is that we can take all of these different pieces of information and integrate them and overlay that with all of your previous experience and then come up with something that's completely new. It's definitely a problem that could be solved, but it's not an engineering problem. It's a social and political problem. Because there are a lot of solutions right now that people could adopt today if they wanted to. And they, yes, they would impact their lives. Yes, they would cost more. But if they all agree, if people really agreed and cared about this problem, I think that we have solutions today that we could start using. It's hard, but we really can figure anything out if we really want to. If we want to, you know, spend the time and money and the politicians decide to do it. Engineers are always going to be in demand. And uh, so that means that engineers, I think, will have an easier time getting jobs than people in other fields. Scientists and engineers learn how the world works, and we learn how to apply how the world works to interesting problems. And the, you know, we can benefit personally and professionally and hopefully benefit society as well. I think it's a great field, and people should be engineers. You know, if you can get over the math stuff that peop some people have to take issue with, um, which really isn't that bad if you just take the time to, to learn how to do it, 
it really opens up a whole new world for you in terms of looking at the world around you and understanding how things work. And that's what I really like about being an engineer is that uh, it's kind of my job to understand how everything around me works and I, and I like knowing that stuff.